I would describe a human soul as complicated. It's too deep for me. I can't explain the human soul. Intricate. It really just makes us who we are. You got mind and body and soul. It's so, the soul is more spiritual than the mind. And like when you pray and stuff like that, that's that's you know comes from your soul. It's a part of you that will always be there if like your physical body isn't. As human beings, we are the most complex of all of God's created beings. And human nature means that we are ensouled bodies. Our bodies and souls, while separate, are intimately connected. We are aware of our minds in a certain way because we often feel ourselves making decisions going through a process. The way we think about our body can have a direct impact on it. The challenge as human beings is to remember that our lives, our persons, rely on a balance of all three things. We need to recognize that they are all connected. We need to make decisions in our lives to ensure that we are healthy and whole people, not concentrating on one area over the other. Caring for the mind, body, and soul. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi, everyone. I'm Nick. And I'm Rachel. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. It's not easy to define the soul as we learn from the teens on the street. But if we understand it as the unseen essence of our existence, made visible in the form of our bodies, and through our actions, then we can see the vital role it plays in our physical, spiritual, and mental health. We'll talk more about this and hear from the teens on the street in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Dr. Eric Jasuski, a chiropractor in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. He'll share with us some of the ways he takes care of his body, mind, and soul. I believe that no one part of the body is more important than any other part of the body. They all need to be working in conjunction with one another and in harmony for the, for the body to express health at its best. Every day you have to devote a little bit of time to each. As far as taking care of my body, I'm trying to eat proper foods every day and make sure my spine and my nerve system are as healthy as they can be by keeping up with my chiropractic checkups, making sure I get enough rest, drinking the right kinds of fluids and the right amounts of fluids. All these things are important for keeping the body healthy. Take care of my soul, I try and pray as much as I can by attending Mass and receiving the Eucharist going to confession so I can make sure that I'm always in a state of grace so that I can receive the Eucharist. I'm working on becoming a daily prayer, uh, even if it's for five or ten minutes a day, a rosary on my way to work or on my way home from work. And then for the mind, we just have to watch what we put into our mind. I, I like to describe the mind or the psyche as a bucket. You put a drop in a bucket and it doesn't seem like it's all that much, but over time enough drops, eventually the bucket overflows. So it depends on what you're filling your bucket with. If you're filling it with good stuff, eventually you're going to overflow into positive things and, and a positive existence. If you're filling it up with bad things, then your reality might be a little bit different. I like how Dr. Eric said for it's key to have the mind, body, and soul in harmony. And he said that makes an, a person to the best potential, and I think that's key, what he said there. Yeah, I just really like how he's a doctor, and even he says that I could still work towards my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. Like, there's always something more we can do. Exactly. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. Okay, they are Laura, Rick, John, Sarah, Caitlin, Emily, and Jonathan. How do you care for your mind, body, and soul? By going to church, that helps my soul. Um, physically, when, I, when I'm with my band, when I play music, uh, I play for others, I'm moving on stage and dancing around, you know, there's lots of fun that keeps, keeps me in physical shape. Um, Knowledge-wise, I mean, studying hard, being, you know, the best student that I could be really, really is something that helps me with my mind. Um, I take care of my mind by, like, instead of, sitting on the couch watching TV, wasting time. I read a book, play my instrument, or sing or something, as opposed to just sitting on TV and letting bad stuff, like not bad stuff, just useless stuff get into your mind. You know, for me, I take care of my body when I'm intact with my emotions, like if I'm sad or if I'm happy, I, I tell myself that that's what I'm feeling and then I go from there and maybe I look for God for help or my family and it's just recognizing those emotions that we're going through. I take care of my mind, body, and soul by surrounding myself with great people like you guys so that I know I'm influenced in a positive way. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. I really think that people is a really strong way to practice your mind, body, and soul to keep them strong. Having good role models in your life, it can help you make good decisions, whether that's like 
you know, eating good foods, getting more exercise, or say having like an intellectual discussion to work out your mind, or to have a group of people that you can pray with or go to mass with? Good answers, guys. Many of us tend to choose one or two parts of our being to care for, but we ignore or give a lot less time to the others. Next, we ask the teens on the street how they each take care of their body, minds, and spirit. And what they consider to be the most important of the three. Let's check it out. I care very much about my mind, body, and soul. I try to take care of everything, keep everything balanced, feel good. Something I do is dance. It's a good way to like have a relaxation time while coming one with your mind and your body and get healthy exercise and put it all into one. You can care for your mind, body, and soul by treating your body as a temple. Not do anything bad like drugs, alcohol, you know, dangerous activities. Which of these is, in your opinion, is the most important and needs the most care and attention, as in mind, body, or soul? Uh, I'd say mind. For me, probably mind is the most important because um, once your mind, once your head's in the right place, everything else kind of follows suit. Mind, I guess, because it controls your body and soul. No matter how you feel or look on the outside, it's the inside that really counts. I think your soul is the most important because that's what goes on to the next life. It's between your mind and your soul. Your mind and your soul are right there. It's like the yin yang. You know, you can't have one without the other. Like you need, you need to be as healthy as possible in both. I believe that you need an equal balance between mind, a body, and soul. Because if your mind is wrong, you might make wrong decisions. If your body is wrong, the decisions you want to make, you might not be able to make them because of your physical, you know, capabilities. And if your soul is wrong, you might have the you know, the kind of heart to be able to overcome these situations. You know, these type of ordeals, you have to have a lot of all three of them to overcome. Which of the three would you say you guys pay most attention to? For me, it's the soul. I try to keep that the main focal point of, of my life because, you know, in the end, when everything else is faded away, the body, the mind, I'll have my spirituality, I'll have God. I think I focus most on the body probably because when I'm home and instead of like studying whenever I can or praying, I'm probably outside like playing, playing with my friends, with my neighbors and anyone and doing anything I can to keep in shape and just make myself happy. You know, the mind can help you uh, understand like a lot of teachings of the Catholic faith like I've been learning a lot more about that recently there's so much logic and reason involved a good relationship between faith and reason I feel like sometimes I neglect the other aspects in order to keep up with my mind I would say oh I don't want to go to the gym I have this big project I have a lot of studying and I feel like I'm better at learning things or doing things that involve my mind than doing things that involve physical activity or something like that and for my soul, I, I just try to be nice, but I don't really do anything to really exercise myself, just try to be a good person. But I definitely go for mind most. I don't know if that's the best thing. But. Definitely for me, I think um, that I pay most, uh, pay most attention to my body. I'm always worrying if my hair looks good and um, if I have enough makeup on, just like every other 16-year-old girl in the world. Like, I wish I could focus more on like the, the mind and the soul, but. I don't know why, I just need to make sure my hair is perfect and stuff and I will have the newest clothes. <laughs> you know, I focus on my soul the most, trying to fill it with good things and positive things because we live in a world where there's like a mix of good and bad and it's, it's sometimes hard. The world around us says we have to look a certain way or dress a certain way and it has a main focus on our bodies. You don't really see advertisements for, oh, come deep in your soul or come deep in your mind, you know? <laughs> it's basically fo focused on image, so. Caring for our bodies through physical activity and nutrition is certainly key to our overall health. As well as getting enough sleep and eating healthy. It's also important to develop our minds intentionally by studying and going to school. The soul is the integrated part of who we are and the only one of these three parts which lives forever. And we care for it by going to Mass every Sunday and receiving the Eucharist. We also care for it by spending time volunteering for charitable organizations or outreach programs, putting faith into action. Which of these do you take most care of? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I believe I take care of my mind most because I feel like, you know, I don't want to be a stupid person. I'd like to think I keep um, a well-balanced ba set in each, but I think my soul will be the most polished because I know that's what I'm going on with in the next life. I try to keep an equal balance, but I mean, like I work out mostly, 
Monday through Friday. Every day, you know, you have school. You obviously have to work your mind in that. You have to do good in school. The soul, that's probably the hardest one because you have to, like, the soul isn't something that's like tangible. You have to like work on it. Is it difficult to see how the body, mind, and soul are connected? Yeah, I don't think it's difficult. I mean, really, like, if you think about any action that you would do, say, like, going to Mass, like, um, you need your body to get you there, and you're receiving Jesus' physical presence in your own physical presence, and you need your mind to be able to understand what you're doing and the prayers that you're saying, and then all these things that it affects your soul because it's bringing you closer to God. I'll agree with that. Uh, kind of almost everything you do does <clears throat> require body, mind, and soul. I'm, I'm a drummer for my uh, teen music ministry at my church, and playing the drums, that's really physical and active, and my mind has to be constantly on, okay, I'm the drummer, I have to keep the beat, I have to stay on time and keep the flow of the music going, and I'm doing it in my church, which affects my soul because it's all prayerful music, and it's through prayer, and it's for God. So they all kind of come together in that aspect for myself. Yeah, I think my mind and my body are driven by my soul because sometimes I'll make plans in my mind that I want to execute with my body, but then I'll remember that it's, this are, these are my plans and that God has bigger plans and God has different plans and sometimes I'm ignorant of those plans and I have to use my soul to remind my mind, to remind my body, to live out God's plan instead of my own. I want to be like a whole person like together, like body, mind, and soul, like my entirety, my entire being. So I want everything about me to be in, in good standing, to be in a good shape, to be, you know, the best I can be. In Psalm 139, it tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And in the book of Genesis, we read that we're created in the image and likeness of God. This translates into an awesome combination of being. But it also means all three components are intricately connected. Let's go back to our spotlight guest, Eric, where he'll discuss how he connects the body, mind, and soul. I believe that balance is, you know, something that was intended for us to be healthy and holy. Ways to balance them out, I believe, are just giving due time to each one. When I find myself out of balance, it's usually because I'm neglecting one of those areas, body, mind, or soul. If I'm not studying the way that I'm supposed to, if I'm not taking care of my body in a physical way, the way that I know I'm supposed to, and the way that I know I can, I'll, I'll suffer in that way. If I'm not praying, if I'm not receiving the sacraments and attending Mass and uh, joining in community you know, with my brothers and sisters from church, then one of those is going to fall out of balance. If we neglect any one, it probably can affect them all. The inner harmony of existence is going to be off. I'm a sinner. Uh, we all are. That's what being out of balance is all about. Sin is something that distances us from the Lord. So the closer we are to God, the more balanced all the gifts are that He has provided us with on the inside, the better things are going to go. The better your life's going to be, the happier you're going to be. And when we notice these moments of being out of balance, is usually when we've fallen into sin. In those moments, I try to get the confession as soon as I can, try to recognize the things that took me out of a state of grace, those near occasions of sin that we talk about, and try and change my circumstances or change my actions. It's not easy to have a perfect balance of all three of these aspects. What I've been blessed to learn, though, is how awesome and magnificent our God is and, and how awesome and magnificent our bodies are that he gave us to use as we walk on this earth. The more I learn about the body and biology and, and how the body works, and especially how the body heals and reacts to things that maybe might be out to cause it harm, I'm constantly blown away every single day. It's such a marvel. If we can just learn to take care of it and provide it with a couple things that it needs, our bodies can completely glorify God the way that he calls us to. What are some ways you can glorify God through your mind, body, and soul? Going to Mass on Sundays, um, adoration is a really big part of it because when you glorify God, when you're in the Spirit, you use your mind, body, and soul. You, have, you use your whole self to worship Him, to praise Him, and to pray with youth group and family and friends. I definitely agree with you, Sarah, because I feel like when you try to glorify God or do something for Him, it, it kind of comes encompassing all the parts of you like I think even something as simple as you know doing the sign of the cross when you pass a church or you see an accident as like a sign of hope or a prayer for someone else is showing God because you need the courage just to you know if you're with a group of people who might not 
do the same thing as you, just to be different even can be difficult. And you're just trying to do that and use your soul and your mind because you're thinking about the people and even just the physical action of making a sign that is respectful to where it's God is doing something. I think you can glorify God by combining prayer with using your body and mind to the best of their ability. So for me, uh, recently I've been doing a lot of running, or a lot for me, um, building up my endurance. And um, I've been saying the rosary when I run, and it's been good for me because it's, it's something to do while I'm running, which is glorifying God with my body by keeping my body healthy. And then it's also, since I want to run, it gives me a motivation to pray. Like Otherwise, I might not want to say the rosary if I was just sitting at home. But by being up and being active, it increases my desire for both things. Yeah, I have the same thing as Caitlin. Like um, I, when I swim and when I'm swimming like a 500, I I have like my mind kind of wanders. That's like really time when you you're alone with your thoughts. And as strange as it sounds, you're doing a strenuous activity, but it's just peace of mind. And I just have a conversation with God, saying, "Thank you for this opportunity for me to swim. Thank you for a healthy body." And you know, it's just it's a great time to to praise God when you're in physical activity. I think that God gives us a blueprint for life, and the best way to glorify Him is by exercising and strengthening our mind, body, and soul so we could build that blueprint to the best of our ability, and I think that gives him the most glory. God wants everyone to just believe in him and do what he wants, and if he just wanted to do that, he could have just given you your soul and been like, you're gonna do this because I want you to and you're gonna do it, but he gave you your mind and body to have the choice to do it. While we take care of our minds to some extent through school, and some of us may take care of our bodies through sports. Many of us forget to take care of our souls. We have to use our minds if we go to school during the week. Practices for sports can be anywhere from two to seven days a week. So when do we find time for our souls? Many of us attend Sunday Mass. Some other ways we can keep our soul in shape is to spend time in daily prayer and meditation. We can practice being more kind, patient, and loving. And take time to read spiritual books. A walk in nature and share life intentionally with others. Reading scripture and reflecting on the ways Christ led his life on earth is also an excellent way to tend to our souls. These are ways to feed our soul. Next, Eric discusses how reflecting on Jesus' time in the desert is a way for him to understand the intense spiritual, mental, and physical pain he experienced as both God and man. In 1 Corinthians, it says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. We think of God as being purely spiritual, and we forget that the, it's called hypostatic union of Jesus Christ, the fact that he is 100% man and 100% divine. We think of Jesus as being divine, but we forget that he was also a human being. It helps me to grow in my relationship with God because it helps me to understand a little bit better what he went through when he was here you know, walking among us. The fact that we have that spiritual, mental, and physical thing all happening within us at the same time, I believe that connects us more to the Lord. When Christ went out into the desert and he was tempted by Satan, he was promised to be, you know, ruler of all the earth. So he obviously, he's experiencing these, you know, these difficulties. He's hungry, he's thirsty, he's exhausted, he's been fasting. So he's going through all this mental anguish, he's going through all this physical anguish. Every time that Satan said something to him and tried to, you know, give him even scripture that, should, that would prove to him why he should do what he was telling him to do, Christ came right back at him with more scripture that talked about the opposite. One thing that that experience should, should teach us is that we need to be studied and we need to be intelligent in scripture because this is the Word of God. So if we don't have this at our disposal, ready to meet these opportunities and these challenges, we're gonna falter when we're, when we're in the desert and going through these difficult times. Another way to care for your soul is through service or outreach. According to Blessed John Paul II, by giving ourselves as a perfect gift, we find freedom to be who we are, to be who we were created to be. So what advice do you have for others to take care of their mind, body, and soul? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's hear what they had to say. What are some suggestions you have on how to take care of mind, body, and soul? Play sports. Do yoga. Always keep a positive attitude. Look on the bright side and exercise. And don't 
Don't listen to the media. That would be a huge thing. Don't listen to the media. Um, the media really aggravates me <laughs> because they, they make girls feel really insecure about themselves and whatever. It sounds kind of silly, but like meditation is a way to just like take a relaxation time off of yourself and focus on those three parts. Your soul, you know, you should stay spiritual. Your mind, you know, you should read a lot. And your body, like, you should work out. And you should, you know, you should take care of yourself. Why is caring for your mind, body, and soul important to God? It's important to God because if you show him that you care about your mind, body, and soul, he'll think that, oh, you appreciate life, you know, you want to go on to heaven. He put us here and he wants us to love us as much as he loves us. And I think in order to love yourself, you have to care for yourself. Your body is your temple. So the way, the way you treat your body is like showing God, like, you know, like how much you, how much you respect him and how much you love him. The soul is the one that's going on to the next, the next life, and the other two are the ones that you are here with now, and you better appreciate them while you have them. Next, Eric tells us how we can bring it all together. Finally, he gives us some advice on keeping a healthy connection between mind, body, and soul, so that we find a balance as a way to glorify God. You know, you're, everybody's got their favorite sin, and it's a lot easier to do them when you haven't when you haven't invited Christ in your heart. But once you've crossed that threshold, there's really no going back in my mind. Once you've been exposed to the truth and you've been exposed to the Blessed Sacrament, not to say that I don't have moments where I sin now, but in my younger days, the sin was abundant and there was nothing to make me ever want to change. It was actually a time when I was having a difficulty with uh, a family member and we had not spoken for about six months and I went to church and I had a friend who said, you, know, you, should, you should really should go to church because most times when I'm having something I'm really struggling with, uh, something in the homily or something in the readings will have to do with what you are going through. I had not been to church in years, so I went back for the first time and the passages were literally exactly about what my issue was. Probably the first time in my young adult adolescent life where I felt the Lord speaking to me. When you're growing up and everybody is, is dating in a certain fashion, and everyone goes to spend time with their friends and they do certain things and you're the one guy or girl that's not doing that, it's tough. It's tough to be different. It's not going to be the easiest road, but you know what? Christ's road wasn't very easy either, but he knew that he had to do it because he loved us. It's, it's not easy to keep all these things in balance, but it's important that we do because all three of these things have a huge impact on our health. He doesn't want us to take care of ourselves to glorify our body. What does he say? He says, I want you to take care of yourself and be healthy so that you can glorify me in your body, so that you can use your body to go forth and continue to glorify the Lord and my son. That's what it's all about. I really like how he, he mentioned that caring for the mind, body, and the soul, they're not ends in themselves. It's supposed to be a means to an end, to bring us closer to God, to glorify God. That's who he called us to be, just like Blessed John Paul II said, I mean, he taught so much about, in, in the theology of the body, he talks about how the body is a reflection of who we are. And in another document that I read called Fetus et Ratio, he talks about how God's given us our intellect so that we can understand so many things. So, but he also says, I believe, that these things are not meant to be just for themselves. It's supposed to be to bring us closer to God. That's the root of who we are. I also think it's recognition of what we need to strengthen because I know we, we all have we all have um, we all have the opportunity to strengthen our souls, our minds, and our bodies through various activities. And it's recognition saying, "Hey, you know, I need to pray a little more. I need to go to the gym a little more." Because where we are now, we could be so much further in the future if we drive ourselves and if we push ourselves to deepen in each one of those aspects. Exactly. I think it's good. I mean, personally, I can think about how we have mind, body, and soul relating. Like, they're three parts in one whole, like the package of who we are. Kind of like God is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Father could be like your mind. The body of Jesus is like your body. And the Holy Spirit is like the wisdom, the like soul of it. So if you can think of yourself like as being all in one and like how it goes together, you, you just force yourself to make things go together. Well, one of the teens on the street and Eric said that our body is a temple. So like damaging it purposefully and doing things that you know aren't good for you definitely isn't what Christ wants for you. Part of being well balanced means that we have to choose the ways to care for our whole person. 
It seems like an impossible task sometimes to find time for homework. And friends. And work. And practices. And God. But even though it's difficult to keep everything in balance, just being aware of this can help us to pay attention to what we feed these three important parts of our being. We need to look for how they are each connected to find a way to take good care of ourselves as a whole. And at least we will be on the path to being everything that God has made us to be. So how do you find a healthy balance of mind, body, and soul in your life? Do you connect them? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or share your thoughts with us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with a prayer. Lord, you created us to be complex persons, people who are body, mind, and soul. Thank you for this abundant life. Please help me to find the best way to balance my life. And to take great care of the gift of my life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.